just checking back all the books. We've just had our tent. How are you? Great. Welcome to the library. As you can see, there's so many books behind you. You have lots to choose from. My name is Bryony. If you do need anything, please do let me know. You've not been here before? Oh, okay. No, that's absolutely fine. I love a newbie. <laughs> no, that's okay. So, I do need you to fill out a new form if that's okay. Our new sort of registration form. Is that alright? It won't take very long and then you can take out as many books as you like. Okay? Let me just grab a form for you. So, I just need to ask you, what's your full name? Please, could you spell it for me? Thanks. Mm -hmm. Is that with an S or no S? Okay. Okay. And what's your date of birth? Perfect. And I just need to take your first line of your address. Mm. Is that a P or? Oh, okay. Mm. And which town is that in? I thought so. I thought it was familiar. Okay. And what's your postcode? Yep. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay. And I just need to take an email address. Mm-hmm. dot com. All right. Thank you. And what's your mobile number? Mm. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. And would you like us to send you text reminders when your books are due to be returned? And would you like emails of any books that we can recommend you? Okay. You can opt in and out at any point. All right. So, just tell me what kind of books are you interested in? Mm hmm. All right. We definitely have these here. Um, welcome. That's fine, that's fine. So, that's everything I need. I will pop this onto the system in a moment and then you're all okay to check out. So, all you need to do when you do check out is just get the books, uh, pop them through the scanner on your way out, and all you need to do is just pop your name. Okay, and you can take them out. Now you're allowed to take out up to 10 books at a time. Alright, and you can keep them for 14 days. Any longer, we will send you text messages and you might be fined. Okay? No, that's absolutely everything. It's quite straightforward and easy. We want everybody to utilise the library. Okay. You would like me to show you some books? Okay, um, well, I cannot leave the desk area because it's just me here. However, I do have some books next to me that's been returned. I believe these are quite popular since they're coming and going. 
would you like me to show you some of these books? Okay, and then afterwards you can have a little look around. Just to the left, just over there, slightly sort of behind you. Yes, um, so there's a map and it's got every area of what kind of books you need. Okay, alright. So, please take a seat. There's one just there. So, I've got quite a handful. How many have I got? I've got eight books that I can show you, if you like. Perfect. Alright, so, I'm going to start off with... The biggest book I have here. I think you'll like this one. Alright. So the first book is this lovely, colourful book. Now this book was donated to us at the library. And it's called The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. Who is the number one best-selling author. And they also write The Midnight Library. We do have this book. Uh, it's, it's just over there, actually, yeah. So if you were interested, we do have it. So, the back says, Nothing is stronger than a small hope that doesn't give up. This book has lots of short paragraphs and sort of ways of thinking, and it's, well, it's a comfort book, really. So, it's quite a nice book to read, um, maybe like a page a day, and it's, it's quite lovely. So, the inside says, Reflections on hope, survival, and the messy miracle of being alive. It is a strange paradox that many of the clearest, most comforting life lessons are learned while we are at our lowest. But then we never think about food more than when we are hungry, and we never think about the life rafts more than when we are thrown overboard. The Comfort Book is a collection of consolations learned in hard times and suggestions for making the bad days better, drawing on maxims, memoirs, and the inspirational lives of others. These meditations celebrate the ever-changing wonder of living. This is for when we need the wisdom of a friend or a reminder we can always nurture inner strength and hope, even in our busy world. A book of timeless comfort for modern minds. So it's quite a really lovely book. Would you like me to read a couple of pages? So let's pick one at random. So we're reading page 113 and it's called Good Sad. It's only a few, um, two, four lines. This one's quite short. Do you ever get a kind of gentle sadness that almost feels good? Like a nostalgia for a lost past or a stolen future that is mournful but also reminds you that life is capable of such warm things and that you were here to witness them. I do. And then there's also this says check your armor. Check your emotional armor is actually protecting you and not so heavy you can't move. So this is, this next one here is 10 things that won't make you happier. Okay, let's read this. Number one, wanting to be someone you aren't. Number two, wishing you could undo a past that can't be undone. Number three, taking out your hurt on people who didn't cause your hurt. Number four, 
trying to distract yourself from pain by doing something that creates more pain. 5. Being a unable to forgive yourself. 6. Waiting for people to understand you when they don't even understand themselves. 7. Imagining happiness is the place you reach when you get everything done. Number 8. Trying to control things in a universe characterised by unpredictability. Number 9. Avoiding painful memories by resisting a contended present. And 10. The belief that you have to be happy. I'll do one more for you. Actually, I'll do two more, since you're enjoying it. I'll do these two. A bag of moments. Happy moments are precious. We need to hold on to them, save them, write them down, place them in a bag. Have that metaphorical bag with you for when it seems happy moments could never exist. Sometimes just to be reminded of happiness makes it more possible. Your most treasured possession. The present is known. The future is unknown. The present is solid. The future is abstract. Ruining the present by worrying about the future is like burning your most treasured possession simply because you might one day lose other possessions that you don't own yet. So what do you think of the comfort book by Matt Hay? Okay, would you like to keep this one with you? Alright, I'll leave it here. All of these books will be kept here anyway, so should you change your mind, you can just take them from here. The next book I'm going to show you is this one by Ellie Griffiths, and it's called The Great Deceiver. Magic sometimes leads to murder. So this is a murder mystery, a bit different to the other book, but it's good to have a variety. So it starts with a magician and a murder in a Brighton boarding house, throwing a show on the pier and a potential serial killer, and you've got the next gripping book in the Brighton mysteries. Now I actually live very close to Brighton. Not too far away, uh, but close enough. Magician Max Mahisto is hailed by a voice from the past. Fellow performer Ted English, aka the Great Deceiver. Ted's assistant, Cherry, has been found dead in her Brighton boarding house, and Ted is convinced that he'll be accused of her murder. Max agrees to talk to his friend, Superintendent Edgar Stevens, who is investigating the case. What Max doesn't know is that the girl's family have hired private detective duo Emma Holmes, Edgar's wife, and Sam Collins to do some digging of their own. When a second magician's assistant is killed, Edgar persuades Max to perform one last time with a female assistant as a decoy, but who will he choose for the role? What do you think of this one? It's not quite what you're after. That's absolutely fine. You don't have to like all of these books. And like I say, I'll leave them here. Should you change your mind, you can look at them, okay? So I'll show you a few more, and then you're free to just explore yourself, okay? So this one is The Last Guest House by Caroline Mitchell. Your perfect escape, your worst nightmare. Do 
BBC, Nicola McKenna promised her boyfriend Matt she would leave work behind for a romantic weekend in the Isle of Skye. But things get off to a bad start when a hotel mix-up leaves them stranded, just as a snowstorm is blowing in. Luckily, one last guest house on the island has room. The couple is glad to reach the safety of the lock house, especially with little George asleep in the back. But their relief is short-lived when they are given strange rules for their own good and start to hear whispers of the house's dark past. Despite her scepticism, Nicola can't ignore the gnawing sense that there is something really wrong with this place. And when her son suddenly disappears, she starts to wonder if they'll ever leave here alive. As snow starts to fall and light and the night closes in, can Nicola solve the mystery of the lock house before it claims another victim? So, what's your opinion on this one? It sounds interesting, yes. So, it gives me a haunted hotel vibe. Would you like this one? Yeah, we can have a little look at it in a bit more detail. We have little areas where you can sit and read, should you want to read the first couple of pages before you take the books out, okay? Alright, I'll leave that one there for you. Okay, next up we have another sort of thriller mystery, okay? Might be a bit of a horror thriller as well. This is called The Night Whispers hear them in the shadows. This is a Slayton thriller by Caroline Mitchell. From the million copy bestseller, author of The Midnight Man, comes the next book in the thrilling Slayton series. So although it's part of a series, these books, you're able to read them individually as well. Okay. It began with the whispers, in the woods, in the park, and always at night. Then they came into town, down dark alleys and in the shadows. Before long, the black-eyed children were moving closer, until finally there was a knock on the door. When the couple were found dead with their faces frozen in horror, the children were nowhere to be seen, until it happened again. Join Detective Sarah Noble as she investigates another dark case in the town of Slayton. This is says perfect for fans of Alex North, Kara Hunter and Stephen King. So it's a thriller mystery horror. I think you would like this one. I think you should give this one a chance. I personally think this one is better than the previous one. Do you want to? Okay. Alright. I've got four more books to show you. So the next book is this one. And this is Fear No Truth by Lindy Walker, a Faith McLennan novel.
McLennan is a newly minted Texas Ranger. Determined to solve a crime involving one of Austin's most sacred institutions. But the chilling truth at the heart of this case is darker and more dangerous than she ever imagined. a quote in the book. The man who fears no truth has nothing to fear from lies. Thomas Jefferson. I think he'd really like this one as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now the next book, I'm not sure if you think it's a little too early to read, but I'm going to show you it anyway. So this is I'll Be Home for Christmas by Abby Clancy. Even stars have Christmas dreams. So if you'd like to get in the Christmas spirit, I have this book for you. All she wants for Christmas. star, Jessica Malone, can't believe her luck. Not only has she signed a major record deal and is topping the charts with her latest single, she's just been offered the chance of a lifetime. A tour with gorgeous megastar Cooper Black. It's everything she's ever dreamed of, except that it means travelling thousands of miles from her boyfriend, Daniel, just when he's finally got down on one knee and popped the question. Far from home and followed by the paparazzi, her relationship is tested more than Jessica ever imagined. Will she make it home for Christmas before it's too late? So this is a romance book with a Christmas twist and I think you'd like it. I know I said that for all of these but I think all of these books are great. What do you think? Would you like a Christmas book? Or not too yet? Is it too early? Okay, well I'll leave it here. <laughs> okay, we have two books left. Now you'll be pleased, we have another Matt Haig book. Matt Haig is a very good author and I highly recommend. Probably one of my favourites. I have a few favourites and that Hague is definitely up there. This is called The Humans. And there's a little dog. So if you love dogs, you have to read this. The Humans by Matt. There's no planet like home. 
After an incident one wet Friday night, where he was found walking naked through the streets of Cambridge, Professor Andrew Martin is not feeling quite himself. Food sickens him, clothes confound him, even his loving wife and teenage son are repulsive to him. He feels lost amongst an alien species and hates everyone on the planet. Everyone, that is, except Newton. And he's a dog. Who is he really? And what could make someone change their mind about the human race? So, I actually really, really like Matt Haig's books. They're all completely different and... They were all such meaningful yet really cool concepts and ideas. I really like it. So we've got a little quote here. I have just got a new theory of eternity by Albert Einstein. I think you'd like this book. It's, the chapters are sort of quite small sections, easy to read. Um, I think I think you'd get on really well with this. Um, if you're one that likes reading a page or two here and there, or in between when you have quiet periods. This is a really good book because sort of each page has its own subheading um, and obviously it's a, it's a book as well but you can sort of read just one page if that's where you can fit in so this book is really good if you're not particularly a fast reader or you read short amounts at a time this book is really really good for that You want to try this one out? I'll put it here for you. And finally, the last book. You're probably not going to want this, but it's another detective book. However, this one is so good that I think you should read it. So this is Eight Detectives. It's got a really cool front cover. Looks like Hollies. It's pretty cool. And it's one of the year's most entertaining crime novels from the Sunday Times by Alex Pathesi. So, I'll read it to you. When did you last read a genuinely original thriller? The wait is over. All murder mysteries follow a simple set rules. In the 1930s, Grant McAllister, a mathematics professor turned author, worked them out, hiding their secrets in a book of crime stories. Then Grant disappeared. Julia Hart has finally tracked him down. She wants to know what happened to him. But she's about to discover that a good mystery can be murder to solve. One of the most creative detective novels of the year, if not of all time. Intelligent and inventive is the most fun I've had in ages. I genuinely wanted to applaud at the end. I think if you want a book that will make you think critically, um, this is one you'd like. And this book also has a second ending as well. So there's a lot this book has to offer. And it's it's written really well. I think you should read it. Okay, yay, thank you. Well, there are all the books that I have here with me. Um, you've got a couple there, I know, but 
you're free to come back and take some more from here if you like or now you can have a little look around the library, that's completely fine please do come back and see me should you need any help at all now, do you have a bookmark? because every new person that registers gets a bookmark for free okay so in my little dino pot here I keep all the bookmarks and I'll go through them but you can pick one so I have a dinosaur bookmark I also have a sort of like a tapestry like bookmark we have this one which sort of has on um, and the book. This one is just a bit of paper. She probably won't want that one. This one we've got the white rabbit. This one is Paddington Bear and it says I love books. We then have one of Westminster Abbey. You'd like that one. Or oh, there's one of Blenheim Palace. Or oh, we have you like Westminster Abbey. You can have that one if you like. Or oh, we have Bath Abbey. Um, we've got a Christmassy themed one with a reindeer and some robins, which is really cute. We have a bee happy with lots of bees. There is a Salisbury Cathedral one here. Or well, we have a Winchester Cathedral one here. The other one you might not like. It's just a paper one. Do you like this one? Hmm, this one I think is better, but I think you like... You like this one, don't you, of Westminster Abbey? Do you want both of these? I'll give you two. Yeah? Okay. Just for you, I'm gonna give you this one. They're just like a tapestry design. It's really cute. This one's actually from the v &A, And it's Strawberry Thief Furnishing Fabric by William Morris. And then we have Westminster Abbey. So this is Westminster Abbey in London. Okay, I'll give you those. And you can use them for your books. Alright. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Um, I hope you enjoy your time here in the library. And again, if you need anything, please do not hesitate. Uh, to come back and see me. Alright? Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.